Hello, everybody. You've tuned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers from the Indianapolis State Police Public Information Office. I'm glad to have you with us today. We want to thank our sponsors, the uh, Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, for their continued support of this uh, informative YouTube show, which Tom Trial behind the scene there, back there waving at us is Tom, and uh, we appreciate him putting us on YouTube each and every week and doing what he does for us. With me today is Sergeant Chris Kath from the Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. Chris, you've been here. You're kind of an old-time veteran of the show here. I appreciate you coming in on short notice and being here today. Well, thanks for having me, Rich. I appreciate it. Well, it's kind of that time of the year where uh, things are ramping up, and you guys have been very, very busy here the last few months and, and weeks doing uh, what you guys do every year, and that's school bus inspections. So kind of give us a uh, Reader's Digest version of uh, how's that going and, and where are we at? It's it's going very well, Rich. We've got uh, 20 inspectors statewide um, in our urban districts, uh, Lowell and Indianapolis and Fort Wayne. We've got multiple inspectors. Every other district, we have approximately one inspector. Each inspector is responsible for approximately 1,000 buses, and those buses have to be inspected annually before September 30th. So we're, we're coming up to the deadline here. Uh, Probably about 98, 99% of the buses are actually inspected. And right now it's just on uh, some of the, the buses that didn't get inspected for one reason or another, whether they were at, out at the shop uh, for uh, repairs or something, right. or a new bus that has come in. Um, they're tracking down their inspector to get it inspected. Now, is that every bus, uh, no matter the age, once a year, or is there a breakdown on age, or how does that work out? Well, actually, it, every single bus in the state of Indiana has, has to be physically inspected by a state police officer. Okay. Um, of those buses, any any bus that is more than 12 years old or older has to be inspected every six months. Okay. So of the 16,000 buses that we, over 16,000 buses that we inspect, uh, we inspect about another 3,500 buses that are 12 years old or older. And that number keeps growing each year just because of uh, financial constraints on schools. Sometimes right. it's uh, uh, more fiscally responsible to keep that bus another couple of years and uh, have it inspected twice a year. But th there's there's nothing wrong with an older bus. Right. Yeah. It just takes a little bit more maintenance, and that's why we do the inspection twice a year on those, just to make sure they're staying up on those older buses. Is there a number, a uh, magic number that says, okay, this l bus can no longer be serviced, or just nope. 12 it's, years older has to be f looked at twice? Yeah, it, as long as it meets the minimum specs and passes each semi-annual inspection, they can continue to use it as long as they want. Right now, I think the oldest bus we have in the fleet statewide is 91 or 92. Yeah. And I think there's only like two or three of those. And probably if they would use it for uh, special events or something like that, where it's not out every day on the road, but perhaps they want to keep it and use it for those um, ball teams or whatever goes out, right. you might have those out yeah, there. They, it is, as long as it passes the inspection, they can use it for any uh, any school-related activity they choose to. Now, does that include uh, uh, passenger vans that you guys might have, the school no, district might have also? Nope, we, we do not inspect passenger vans. Um, actually, vans are not allowed to be used for transportation in school, uh, in the school transportation industry in the state of India. Uh, you, you know, the 15 passenger vans not a, the, is safe of a vehicle as possible. Right. Uh, if they're going to do the school transportation, they can do it in under a nine passenger vehicle, like a, a minivan or a, a teacher or coach's car. They could do that. Uh, but if it's anything larger than nine passenger, it has to be in either a school bus, a special purpose bus, or what's called a multifunction school activity bus, which is built to the same standards as a school bus. What about um, uh, churches? Uh, or if a church has a school, do you, mm -hmm. are you guys responsible for that also? If it is a school and they use a conforming bus, then yes, we do the inspection for them. Um, there's a, a state law that allows a non-public school to use a non-conforming bus. Although they're allowed to do it, we don't really recommend it because that non-conforming bus is not built to the same safety standards. Yeah, okay. Well, that's interesting. Again, we're talking with Chris Kath from the uh, Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division, and we're talking about the school bus inspections and uh, how the Indiana State Police is involved with that. And that's that's been one of our uh, duties for as far back as I can remember. Has your is your group growing? Are you staying the same, or how does that work out? And are the, are the number of buses that you folks have to look at is that growing? Uh, the number of buses that we look at is growing, um, just based on the semi-annual aspect. Um, 
Each year we inspect about 24,000 buses, although we only have 16,000 buses statewide. By the time you throw in our right. annual inspections, our semi-annuals, our post-crash inspections, our spot inspections, and then any time the registration is changed on a bus, if contractor A owns the bus and then okay. has it inspected today and sells it to contractor B next week, we have to do another inspection for contractor B on that same bus. Just Even if it's the, the next day. Yep. <laughs> just because the ownership changes, we right. have to do the inspection. And, and it's it's typically not that that happens. Right. Yeah. But it, it could be that it was inspected um, last year and it's still valid this year and it goes to that new owner and we do the inspection then. I know uh, many times when a while back it was more popular to be the owner oper- owner operator. Is that Fallen by the wayside, is it more of a corporate-owned thing now, and they have the, they hire their drivers? Most of the schools actually own the buses. Um, once you get outside of the metropolitan areas, there are still some of the owner-operators, but uh, the last figure I saw, the bulk of the majority of the buses are still school-owned. Okay. Can they take care of the owner operators can they take care of their own maintenance and as long as they they keep it under yes. maintenance that they can do that then there's yep. not any requirement that they go to a certain garage or anywhere no absolutely they, they can do the maintenance it just has to be to the proper standards um then as far as the the, the breaking kingpin is one of the, the major things that we've tasked the owners with doing instead of us jacking up the bus um, taking the wheels off, inspecting the brakes that close, and then uh, checking the kingpin for any movement in the, the front steering. Right. Um, back in early 2000s, we began tasking the, the owners of the buses with that duty, and they have to do that once every six months. And to do that, it has to be completed by a qualified person. And a qualified person, is we revert back to the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, is basically somebody that is experienced in it, trained in it and has been doing it for more than a year okay. it's, it's not that you somebody can just go buy a bus and say yep, yeah I, i'm a bus mechanic because <laughs> i own the bus now so they get to know somebody what they're looking at uh, speaking of what they're looking at what do you guys look for one of your inspections that you go through what's your what's your average time that you're taking per bus uh the average is about 20 minutes now you get into the metropolitan areas where the guys are working in a, a inspection team it very well could get whittled down to three to five minutes just okay. because you've got two to four people inspecting one bus at a time and they're doing an assembly line procedure. And you guys have done this a couple of times, so you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the guys get sick of seeing yellow about this time of the year. Yeah. They've done so many inspections. But the, the average time, man hour on each bus is approximately 20 minutes, and we're looking at everything that we can see, feel, and touch. Uh, we're looking at the exterior body condition, the interior condition, looking for rips and tears in the seats to make sure that the first aid kit meets the specs. Okay. Um, if it's equipped with seat belts, making sure that uh, they're they're serviceable and, and in good working condition. Um, checking for the emergency exits to make sure that they're operating properly, labeled properly. Um, we're also checking underneath the bus and checking the steering, the suspension, the brakes the fuel system, um, the engine, transmission, axles, drive line. Uh, we, we're also looking at the lights on the bus to make sure that they're all operating properly. And I know uh, one time you and I were doing a film crew together and, and one of the news was out there and, and things can happen. They pulled a bus in that was fine. They started up, pulled it in there, and one of the hydraulic yeah. lines breaks. It's, it, it's, it happens. A, it's a mechanical device. It's prone to failure at any point. Um, it, they could look at it, inspect it themselves, and present it to us and there'd be a light out or the uh, hydraulic line go it just you never know when or how it can happen that's why we so thoroughly check the buses that we do um, or, or all the buses in the state just to ensure that they're being maintained properly because the maintenance on it is the main thing right um, and one of the things that we advocate to all the schools is Although you're only required to do the brake and kingpin inspection once every six months, well, if they're doing a full inspection on a bus every 90 days, that's probably the best way to mm-hmm. do it because they're going to find more things than than not. And I know you guys download this all electronically. You keep records of that so you can go back and look at the history of any bus in the state. Yeah. Uh, we can go back to 2012 and, and look at the past history that's in the database. That's wonderful. 
Well, I know we uh, were talking about maintenance and, and how to keep the buses on the road and what you guys do for that. But we were talking before uh, we went on air, too, is is some of these stop arm, stop arm violations that are occurring with school buses. And you kind of gave me an alarming statistic that what's happening throughout the state. Yeah, out, out, of, out of the 16,000 buses that we have, on an average day, we have approximately 2,700 via stop arm violations. That's and, amazing. And, and how, how did you learn about this? Well, each year, the Department of Education does a survey, and they put notice out to the schools uh, months in advance. They ask for participation. I think this last year we had out of the, I want to say the no- number of schools is approximately 500. I think we only had is, uh, under 200 schools participate. And out of those 200 schools, they reported as a little over 2,700 stop arm violations, the majority of them being on the left-hand side. Okay. And there, there's a lot of statistics that go into it. Um, you have to consider we have 16,000 buses and over, I think it's over 1 million student ridership on a, on a daily basis. So, Because you and I were talking, some of these buses go out multiple times during the day, uh, at least twice generally. Right, and but some can go out for multiple times, uh, and and picking up and dropping off kids at uh, building trades or whatnot, and so there's many times that a bus could be out just on its own. Yeah, um, some schools do a single tier, uh, some do right. two or three tier, where you know the elementary, junior high, and middle school or high school, you know. So there's three different route times, so they, a bus could theoretically be out six times, six different routes a day. But the the worst part about it is that's 2,700 times that a student could get hit. Right. Um, We really want to get the uh, notification out to motorists to pay attention to the school bus. Um, When that yellow, when those yellow lights come on, there's a state law that says that the school bus driver has to give adequate warning that they're going to be stopping the bus. And those amber lights, yellow lights on overhead are that indicator that the bus is preparing to stop <clears throat> it's really no different than a uh, traffic signal yellow light at an intersection right yellow light is indicating that you need to prepare to stop not mm-hmm. speed up and hurry up through the <laughs> intersection <laughs> and i think you had a story on that too i did it was uh last week i had a driver um blow the stop arm on a school bus right next to me um we were in a fully marked state police fully marked state police vehicle uh, the bus actually did phenomenal at it. Um, they were approaching um, a busy intersection on a major state road in, in Indianapolis area and turned the overhead amber lights on, gave more than sufficient warning. I stopped. The vehicles to my right stopped. Um, Are you behind the bus? I was behind the bus. Buses ahead of me. Saw the amber lights come on. So I began stopping, and I wasn't sure if the bus was actually going to stop before the intersection or after the intersection. So I just stopped and made sure I stayed behind the bus. And two vehicles to my left passed me and made the left-hand turn. And then the red lights came out, or red lights came on and the uh, stop arm came out. And a pickup truck passed me, (laughs) made the turn, and continued on. And claimed that they never saw the red lights. But they did see the yellow lights. And they didn't put two and two together and realize that yellow means prepare to stop. And I can't understand, and I can't fathom how that driver would feel had a young person walked out from that bus and got struck that I just can't imagine. And hopefully they they can, uh, I'm sure after you uh, gave me your autograph on the piece of paper that they can maybe uh, take note that this, this is a very, very serious violation. It, It is. And that's, that's the thing. A lot of drivers, um, and one of the things that driver stated to me was that, well, they see the bus there every day. This is the way that they travel to work, and they know that the uh, student is picked up on the right-hand side. Well, but they don't know if a route has changed or if a student, for one reason or another, is actually going to be crossing on the left. And the, dr- the school bus driver is supposed to be right. um, making notification to the students when they can cross, but they're kids. They see their bus. and. Yep. They're going to come running. Yep. We we have to make sure our drivers are doing everything they can to keep our students safe. And that's the whole thing. The whole theme of this show is uh, make sure that you stop for those stop arms. Yes. Most definitely. Chris, we uh, appreciate you being here. We're out of time. We've uh, 
talk to the end of our show, but thanks for coming in. I hope to have you back again. Thank you, Rich. Anytime. Again, you've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids. Appreciate you listening. We'll catch you again next week. Roadshow is out.